My name is Jessica Wetzel, and I am the e-commerce manager here at Enable Mart. And I wanted to start off by thanking you for joining us today and participating in our webinar with Mary Wilson, who is the president of Laureate Learning Systems. And as you know, the topic for today is how we can help students who have difficulty with questions, whether it's understanding, answering, or asking them. In my conversations with Mary and her team um, planning this webinar, they have truly demonstrated to me their expertise in this field, and I am confident they are going to provide us with some very valuable information in today's webinar. But before I turn the time over to Mary, I want to do a few quick housekeeping rules about today's webinar. Um, the first one is we will not be taking audio questions, but would like you to submit your questions via the questions interface and go to webinar. I will be reading the questions to Mary as we go through the presentation. So you can ask, ask your question anytime, and um, I'll, you know, I'll read it out to me, out loud to Mary, and she will answer it just to make sure that we are clear and everyone is on the same page during the webinar. Um, the second thing I wanted to mention was that Mary is going to take up to 50 minutes for her presentation, after which, um, if there's any additional questions, we will take them as they arrive. And this webinar will be recorded, and a link to it will be posted on the EnableMart.com website, as well as emailed to you for future playback. So um, you will be receiving an email after the webinar with a link to the recording, plus a certificate of attendance, and any additional material that um, we discussed today, any additional resources, a link to the, the products and things like that. At the end of the webinar, we will be selecting one lucky attendee to win a free Question Quest software package. So make sure you stay till the end because that is you have to be present to win. And um, without further ado, I'm going to turn the time over to Mary. So Mary, thank you very much, Jessica, and welcome everyone. Uh, glad to have you here today. Uh, we're going to be talking about the problem of mastering later developing. Uh, WH and yes no questions which are especially difficult for children with language disorders and the problem is is that there are many semantic or meaning and syntactic or structure subtleties that kids have to learn in order to respond to questions and to ask questions and this the, the deficits in this area are especially uh, profound, have an especially profound effect on classroom performance as well as reading comprehension and communication. One of the things here at Laureate that we're very much dedicated to is using theory and research to inform our educational practices. In choosing content, we are driven by current linguistic theory and research on language that provides the basis for improved syntax assessment and intervention. So we can help our students build both sentence comprehension, which in, is both oral and written, and use, which is both speaking and writing. We also use applied behavioral analysis principles to provide the basis for instructional delivery of our linguistic-based curriculum. These are long proven uh, instructional strategies that have worked for some time, both in the classroom and in software. Software is in very important for delivering receptive interventions that can help kids master syntax. The language that kids hear around them provides the information they need to develop the formal grammar component of the language, which is, consists of vocabulary and syntax, which is sentence structure. Social interactions, on the other hand, are absolutely important to the development of pragmatics or the use of language in social situations. Both the acquisition of the formal grammar component, which is vocabulary and syntax, and pragmatics are vital to the development of communication competence and reading comprehension. Why do we emphasize receptive information intervention? Well, 
grammar, that is vocabulary and syntax, that formal component, is acquired through listening. And therefore, receptive language intervention should be a critical component in programs for children with language disorders. Structured intervention, receptive, that it's designed to build vocabulary and syntax is very important for children with language disorders, regardless of e etiology. So whether they have cognitive disabilities, they are on the spectrum, or they have language disorders without any other concomitant problems, these vocabulary and syntax pose problems for all of these kids. Because of time constraints, speech-language pathologists and also special educators concentrate on communication. That is expressive language in social context, even though they recognize it's very important to provide that receptive training. For example, learning new vocabulary, learning new forms that we can use in sentences. The problem is time as we all know, uh, that there isn't time, and so the human beings have to concentrate on what they're essential for, which is communication. Here's where software comes in. It can deliver receptive language intervention without requiring the presence of a special educator or speech language pathologist. In fact, those of us who have worked for a very long time using software um, hate to admit it, but it's true, the kids like doing receptive language intervention software better with a computer than they do with us. But maybe that's because even though the computer may tell them it's a ball, see the ball, here's the ball, a thousand times they're still, the computer is just as excited the thousandth time as the first time. And sometimes we as human instructors have difficulty maintaining our enthusiasm. The Question Quest curriculum provides students with uh, the instruction needed to answer who, what, with what, where, how, and why questions. Students learn how to answer exhaustively. What does that mean? That means identifying all members of a set so that, for example, if you're in an automobile accident and there's three people in your car and the cop asks you who was in the car when you had an automobile accident, you have to name all three people who were in your car or you're in trouble. It also means that matching, if I ask who is eating what and sitting where, they have to match all of the characters with where they are sitting. Students also learn to discriminate between WH and yes-no questions. And this is actually where the problem comes in. We've all seen kids who you say, do you want chocolate or vanilla ice cream? And they say yes, when in fact they were supposed to answer chocolate or vanilla. Students also learn how to discriminate among WH questions, so discriminating among how, why, where. These, this is very critical in school. The Question Quest curriculum has three levels of, of comprehension training. And each level has seven different modules that use multiple exemplars for training purposes. Before looking at the software, we're going to go through some examples from each of the three levels to familiarize your, you with some of the topics that we are covering. In level one, module four, for example, we have what we call who, what, where introduction. In this module, kids learn to discriminate among person, object, and place questions. But we've simplified the tasks. So rather than asking simply who is uh, painting the girl where is the boy, where is the man painting, and what is the man painting, where the questions are identical in syntactic form, we've simplified the task by asking who questions that are subject questions that 
have the subject in the beginning, who is eating an apple, the what, where are object questions that where we actually move the word from the end of the simple sentence to the beginning to form a question. So what is the officer eating? The base sentence would be, the officer is eating an apple. And we move that blank what at the end of the sentence to the beginning, and the same thing with where. The officer is eating an apple in the kitchen, which we substitute the where for in the kitchen and move that where to the beginning of the sentence, which is a much more difficult task than who is eating an apple, where the officer is eating an apple, remains in the subject position, and doesn't move. Module 5, which is the next module after this one, uses all object contrast, which is who, what, where is the mother cleaning. So here is an example of the introduction which, by the way, in field testing, we found we had to add. Because even though kids had already gone through who and what questions, both subject and object, where they say what is under the table, who is under the table, and what is the girl eating, what is the girl carrying, and who is the girl carrying, they still had difficulty. So we introduced this module to help them introduce with different syntax or different sentence structure. So we have who is eating an apple, what is the officer eating, and where is the officer eating an apple. If we look at level one, module six, we see the first introduction of who, what, where, exhaustive answering. Here students must identify all members of the set of people, objects, or locations that are requested by the question. An exhaustive response is required, so that is, all members of the set must be chosen. And many students with language disorders do not understand that these require an exhaustive answer. And in fact, even neurotypically developing kids go through a stage where they will answer with just one answer of the set. Interestingly, they never answer with just two members if the set includes more than two. They go from answering just one to uh, answering the full set. So this is an example of who is washing the car, where we see that they have to answer the boy, grandma, grandpa, and the girl in order to be correct. On level two, module four, we introduce the concept of discriminating between WH and yes-no contrasts. So students have to choose whether a, a, a question is a WH or a yes-no question based and give the answer that's appropriate to the question. So they choose from a picture array that always includes the WH questions and the yes-no responses, which are a nodding head for yes and a shaking head for no, as we see here. Now, in the actual software, we'll see that these are actually animated. And even though we only need the yes-no animated, we have animated the WH so that we aren't giving anything away by distracting students or giving them more information. In level two, module seven, we introduce how instrument. Now, this is the semantics of how instrument questions, and that's used to identify uh, a tool or object that's being used to accomplish a goal or activity. And this is the most common kind of how question, you know. Uh, for example, here, how is the girl breaking the pinata? She's breaking it with a bat. Uh, how do you open a, a lock with a key? Uh, this, is, this is the most typical of the uh, how questions. In level three, module one, we introduce how manner. Now, this is where kids learn the semantics and syntax of questions in which a character is engaged in an activity that's involved a distinct posture or body movement. And we provide introductory training by choosing 
an abstract character doing the same action rather than having them match to sample because we don't want students simply matching the manner target to the referencing but rather making sure they're abstracting the concept so here we have a monkey how is the monkey hanging upside down and then we have Zot how is the monkey hanging from the branch we have to choose Zot to give our answer and this of course would be the correct answer he's hanging upside down in level three modules two and three we introduce two different kinds of why questions now one of the things that I frequently see when out in the field is that rather than introducing these how questions separately they uh, are mixed together and this causes a lot of problems for the children because they are frequently confused because there are different kind of answers that you give to these kind of questions so just as we introduced how uh, how uh, instrument separately from how manner so we do with why cause and why purpose so we first know why cause we first learn why cause uh, questions that request the identification of external circumstances that motivate an action so we have why is the officer chasing the dog because he took her hat and these kind of why cause questions are frequently answered with because um, after they've learned that they learn why purpose questions that require the identifying the motivation for performing the action so why is the boy filling the tub to wash the dog um, so so that this is a different kind of why uh, kind of question only after they have gone through separately learning these how questions and these why questions do they begin to discriminate between how instrument and manner and why cause and purpose questions so once we start mixing them students have to choose among pictures that depict the the response to how instrument or manner and why cause or purpose questions this is the first time in module six on level three that we are actually having the students discriminate among these four types of how questions so as you can see we have spent a lot of time doing discrete trial training on each of these separate semantic concepts so we're sure the kid is solid in his knowledge before we mix them up I love this is one of my favorite scenes in the software and it is the boy crawling out of the tent and asking how is the boy leaving the tent and why is the boy leaving the tent now interestingly the why question can be answered with either a why cause or a why purpose answer he can be in this case he's why is he leaving the tents is because he's trying to get away from the skunks but it could also be answered with why is he leaving the tent uh, is that it is because the, the skunks are coming in so we we provide these kind of supports with the pictures that allow children to make these kind of discriminations and understand that in the real world we may have different answers but you look to the context in order to support your answer in level three module seven we have our final module where students learn to discriminate discriminate among how why and where questions when they successfully complete this module students have 
a solid mastery of understanding and answering WH and yes, no questions. So here we have an example from that last module in level three where we have how is the baby crawling, why is the baby ca crawling, and where is the baby crawling. So this is how the baby is crawling. This is why the baby is crawling to get to the toys. And this is where the baby is crawling on the rug. So Question Quest is a Sterling Edition program. And what are Sterling Edition programs? They're Laureate's new generation of language intervention software. Curriculums are based on current linguistic theory and language research and all employ instructional strategies that have proven to be effective. And those are largely taken from principles of programmed instruction and the analysis of behavior. All of these uh, development and field testing of the Sterling Edition program, language programs, were supported by a series of small business innovation research grants from the National Institutes of Health primarily the Na National Institute on Deafness and Other uh, Communication Disorders, but also the National Institute on Health, Child Health and Human Communication, uh, uh, Health and Human Development. What makes the Sterling Edition special is that they, not only are the curriculums based on theory and research, and obviously evidence-based practices, the Sterling Administration System gives you an extensive data collection, management, and reporting system for an unlimited number of students. There's no limit to the number of students you can track using the software. The optimized intervention expert system automatically tests and trains based on an individual's responses. So if the student is making errors, the program increases instructional support if they are getting answers correct, that it decreases instructional support until they've mastered a module in which time, at which time it's taken out of, out of uh, training and another module is brought in. Accountability is really easy because there are built-in reports. You can create your own reports, but in our experience, most people use and rely on the built-in reports. Delivering the curriculum with optimized intervention, the optimized intervention expert system, is really the easiest way to, make, to ensure that the student is getting a, a really good experience, learning experience, and going through the curriculum without having constant monitoring by a special educator or speech language pathologist. Optimized intervention begins with probe testing to determine the appropriate content and also the level of instructional support that the student needs. Once the student enters into training, the optimized intervention automatically adjusts instructional support based on student responses. And as the curriculum is mastered, we assess new content and it enters into training. With optimized intervention, which was also, whose development was also supported by grants from the, unit, from the National Institutes of Health, students can use the programs in their classrooms without professional assistance. This means that you are expanding the services of the speech language pathologist and special educator. In fact, if a student is using software in the classroom that specifically uh, specified in his IEP, meeting IEP goals and objectives, if a student is seeing a speech language pathologist two half hour sessions uh, once a week and they use the software just 10 minutes a day, uh, five days a week, you have uh, 20 minutes a day or 10 to 20 minutes, you can double the amount of services that they're receiving. And increased services, we know, means students reach their goals and objectives more quickly. Hey, Mary. Yeah? I have a question, I have a question in from um, a 
D. King wants to know what age population do you recommend this for? I work primarily with pre-K kids who have difficult, great difficulty answering questions. Okay, here's, um, here's an, this is a very good question because normally we would not be, uh, begin this curriculum until kids have language functioning of about three years of age. And it covers up to language functioning of about six years of age. You can find a linguistic hierarchy checklist on our website that will help you determine a kid's functioning level. And we also have a free uh, syntax test that, Jessica, you may want to uh, have available, make available for them that they can test to see if kids have basic knowledge of simple sentences before they ask questions. Now, one of the things that's really interesting is that a lot of people who aren't, you know, who don't study uh, language acquisition uh, don't realize is that actually in the one word stage, neurotypically developing kids are able to ask questions. They do it with intonation. So even before they have the syntax and the structure, they can say things like up, which of course means pick me up. Um, and so frequently uh, what, what I, I see is that it's very important that the students have some base sentence structure because what QuestionQuest is doing is really drilling down the semantics and the syntax of questions, which is absolutely necessary for them to master questions, but it actually comes in somewhat later in typical development than does that knowledge that you can use intonation to ask questions. Okay, so if we look at the instructional levels in Question Quest, we see that we have beginning that uses pretrial instruction, so it tells them the answer. We use cueing to the correct response, which points a little arrow at their, the correct response, and also a form of feedback called knowledge of the correct response. This is really critical. And that follows um, a response either through reinforcement, where they're told they're correct, or corrective feedback, where we're told this is the answer. Uh, we don't tell them no, we just tell them this is the answer. Intermediate feedback uh, uh, instruction includes pretrial instruction, but no cue to the correct answer, but it does include KCR, or knowledge of the correct response. And the advanced presents a trial with no antecedent instruction, but just the knowledge of the correct response. We tried to design it so each level of instruction has different feedback language, because when kids are engaged in reinforcement, it is a very perfect time to enhance the language input to them, uh, because they're paying attention, they're intrigued by the animation, and it's, we've got them engaged. So it's a really good opportunity to provide them with more information. Uh, Mary, I have a few more questions coming in. Okay. Uh, the first one is, uh, these are all from Sally, actually, and she wants to know, can screenshots be printed from question class? Yes. Okay, now we're going to do some exploration of the Question Quest software. So I'm going to go and start up the Question Quest software. Okay, once we boot up the software, the first thing that happens in a Sterling edition is we get the educator's login. You can add as many educators as you would like, and they each can have their separate kind of uh, student log, uh, as well as they can choose what their title is that's going to appear on the report. So let's say that's okay and we will go now to we have unfortunately changed to John Wilson so I'll change myself back to Mary Wilson and you notice that what 
what we have here is a little desk on the left hand corner and we have all these stars that are take you to various locations in the program. I've set up a number of students that I have uh, chosen selective modules to demonstrate how the software works. But first, I'd like to add a new student. And that new student will then start with what we call optimized intervention. OK, so if we start with question quest one, it automatically goes to optimized intervention. So if we start, the student will begin by being probe tested. The boy is drumming. That's who is drumming. And we start with a little introduction so the student knows what they're going to be tested on. And now we'll begin testing. Who is pulling the toy duck? Who is drinking? All right. Now, we're, if we continued on with that, I would be tested until I failed a module. And then once I failed a module, I would be put into training in that module. But in order to expedite this, I have set up a number of students, as I said. And this one is set up. If we go to program settings, you see that I have chosen not to do optimized intervention, but rather have chosen to do training by module level. And I have chosen to show module four, which is who, what, where, introduction. And we're going to do mixed forms. I've turned the instructional introduction on, but since you've already seen an instructional introduction in the testing, at this point, I'm going to turn it off. Now, because it's intermediate training, we're going to have pre-trial instruction as well as knowledge of the correct response following a correct response. So let's go and see what that looks like. Who is painting a picture? The girl. The girl is painting a picture. That's who. Who is painting a picture? That's right. The girl. The girl is painting a picture. That's who. <coughs> who is building a doghouse? Now, if I get it wrong. The father. The father is building a doghouse. That's who. Who is building a doghouse? At the intermediate level, it's going to cue me to the correct response. If I get it wrong again, Who is building a dog house? it re-instructs me. Father. The father is building a dog house. That's who. OK, let's look at the next student I set, set up. And we'll be looking at module six, which is who, what, where, exhausted. And I have set it for advanced training, which means we'll have no instruction. But I have turned the instructional introduction on. So let's see what that looks like. And note that I don't have to keep going back to the main page. I can push the little go button right up here in the upper left-hand corner. Some people are washing the car. The boy. Grandma, the girl, and Grandpa are all washing the car. When we ask who is washing the car, we have to choose all the people who are washing the car. Who is washing the car? The boy, Grandma, the girl, and Grandpa are all washing the car. 
where did the baby drop his toys? All right, so now I have to choose. And since this is an advanced training, Note that I don't have to do them in any particular order. What is the girl pulling? Now, if I make a mistake, it's immediately going to give me instruction on the advanced level. It isn't going to give me a second chance at a trial. OK, let's look at the next student I have set up. And this student is going to be demonstrating a module from level two, which is who is, is not, and yes, no contrasts. And I've turned the instructional introduction off. Now, it would always be on in optimized intervention. That's not an option that you have available. But I have left it at intermediate, so we will get instruction. One person. And the other is not. Who is sitting? And here's Grandpa. our instruction. That's who. who is sitting? OK, so you note that I have my choice of yes, no, and I also have the choice of the two characters. That's right. Grandpa, that's who. One person is reading. <laughs> and the other is not. Well, I was hoping to get a yes-no question, but since it's random, we don't have any control over that. Good. The baby. That's who. And that's an animation that you can turn off. One person is sitting. And the other is not. All right, well, we didn't get a yes-no question, but anyway, let's go on to the next student I have set up. The next student is going to show us a how instrument module, which is the last module on level two. I've turned off the instructional introduction, and let's put it on advance so that we don't have to go through the instructional procedure. I think you now see how it works. How is the cowboy eating noodles? OK, how is the cowboy eating noodles? Good. With, With chop. chopsticks. OK, note that on the advanced the level, looking at birds? when I get the correct answer, it just gives me the uh, the ellipsis response with binoculars, which is the adult How did the boy response. Make a picture? OK, after the student has learned the how instrument, which is the most common of the uh, how questions, we'll look at an example from the first module in Question Quest Level 3, which is how manner. And here I've turned the instructional intro on because it actually shows you how you learn to use the little bot who is imitating the reference Look scene. The boy doing a trick. How is he doing the trick? On his hand. That's how. This is the manner he's doing it. And here is Zot. He is doing the trick the same way as the boy. So again, we don't when want asks, match to sample. How is the boy doing the trick? Choose the 
picture of Zot doing the trick the same way. How is the boy doing the trick? On his hand. That's how. How is the girl dancing? Again, this is the advance, so if I get it wrong, it's just immediately how going to give me feedback. Dancing? On her toes. That's how. How is the boy standing? Now note if I get it right. It gives me a much shorter response than if I have gotten it wrong and it's re-instructing. OK, now let's look at a why cause example. Why is the cowboy cleaning the table? Because the table. And this is at the intermediate level with the intro turned off. Why is the cowboy cleaning the table? Yes, because paint spilled on it. That's why. Now note we're putting the tag on that's why on the intermediate level. Because the girl is giving him a bone. That's why he's sitting up. Why is the dog sitting up? Why is the dog And again, because up? it's the intermediate level, it gives me another chance to get it correct. Good. But it gets counted as a wrong home. answer. That's why. OK, now let's look at. a how, why example. And it is not until we set, remember that we separately trained the how instrument, how manner, why cause, why purpose, before we ever start contrasting how and why. So let's go and we'll see. The boy is leaving the tent on his hands and knees. OK, that's, that's the manner. leaving the tent. The boy is leaving the tent because the skunks are coming in. That's why he's leaving the tent. He's motivated to leave the tent. How is the boy leaving the tent? On his hands and knees. That's how. Why is the boy leaving the tent? Because the skunks are coming in. That's why. Why is the boy filling the wash tub? Yes, to wash the dog. <laughs> now this, of course, is a why purpose example. All right, so one of the things that we also talked about is finally being able to use the software for um, uh, eliciting expressive responses. Now, I've set up a student who I call the Abe Jones, and I've set it up so that they're in testing mode on who, what, where, which we've seen earlier. And I've also set it so that rather than mixed questions, they're only going to be asked the who questions. And so I have set also the response time to infinite. Note also that you can also, for every student, choose to have scanning. And you have your choice of linear step or two switch step scanning. And then you can set the parameters as far as uh, setting time in response uh, time. So uh, let me t turn that back to direct. Uh, select for me, and again, for infinite, so you have plenty of time to let the student respond. I've also turned the text off, so they're just going to hear the question. So in this case, what I would be doing is asking the student Who's playing the saxophone? It's asking the student to answer the question. And so 
in this particular case, they could say grandma, or grandma is playing the saxophone, or she is playing the saxophone would all be acceptable. And if they said any of those things, I would click on the grandma, and then at the end of the session, I would be able to put in the comments session, section that uh, this was an expressive session. OK, so let's just look at all, some of the other features that are available to you. There's a report writer, which will, uh, which will give you automatic uh, which will give you automatic reporting capabilities. You see that I just clicked on a view report. I can choose the kind of activities that I want to have. And there's also advanced uh, capabilities that allow you to put in custom report items. So it's really quite easy to use, and it's easy to document, document progress and be accountable. So let's move back to the PowerPoint presentation. After, you, uh, after a student has mastered a module, we can go back and use those same pictures to have structured asking and answering. Um, it's, it's important that you at first include multiple exemplars of the same question contrast, just like we did in receptive training. And it's only after uh, a student can use questions in a structured setting should you expect them to use questions in social settings for communication pr purposes. Sometimes we jump the gun on that and our students aren't ready to just leap uh, from understanding how a, a question and knowing how to answer it to being able to ask that same question without considerable amount of support beforehand. So if you use the same stimuli that we use to train question co comprehension for question asking and answering, you help the student and support them by using the same familiar stimuli. And students are better able to see the continuities among understanding, answering, and asking questions. Um, so we can use modeling. Uh, just as it would use in comprehension training. We can use a stimulus set of contrasting forms, taking turns asking and answering questions, but there's always the option within each of the modules to focus in on just one question form. Uh, so for example, we can also use text cues and provide additional prompts. So we can use the test level. There are three. You can use optimized intervention, training by level, or the test level to use for expressive practice in answering questions. And what's really cool about doing that is that you can set the response time to infinite on the program settings, turn the text off, and choose the form or forms you want to work on. So if we were using the who introduction, who, what, where introduction, we could choose just to work on who. If you go ahead with the test, the program will ask the question. If the student answers correctly, you choose the correct stimuli. If not, choose the incorrect response. And this means that at the end of the session, you can put in a comment that this was an expressive session, and you'll have a data summary from that session to complement what other data su su summaries you had from the receptive computer work. So here we have a picture of the officer eating an apple in the kitchen. And we would expressively use a model, who is eating an apple, the officer, the officer is eating an apple. We would point to the officer, the small picture, back here, point to the officer either here or here, and say, who is eating an apple? You would accept responses of either the whole sentence or the officer, which is the grammatically correct adult response, which is what we call an ellipsis response, which we normally would say. So if I ask, who is eating? Uh, uh, who is eating an apple, you would probably say the officer. Uh, it's important, however, that the student include the determiner, which is the definite article the, 
because if they don't include the, it means that they have just focused on naming the who, and they have not really understood that they had to capture the entire phrase, which is the officer, not just officer. So, um, Bonnie would like to know, is there any provision for nonverbal students using augmentative communication to use this test? Uh, the, the, there's single switch access on all of the Sterling Edition programs. Single, there's linear step and two switch step scanning. Uh, since you are using a human being for um, their expressive use here, of course you can use the whatever device they're using would be appropriate for expressive asking and answering questions. So we just looked at expressive answering who questions. Now we can look at expressive asking. And yes, you can definitely use the kids' augmentative communication system. So in here, we would say while pointing to the who card, you can say, I can ask who is eating an apple. And that's supposed to be an apple, not and apple. Uh, can you ask me about her? And you would accept any correct who question that's appropriate to the referencing, such as who is eating an apple, who is eating in the kitchen, who is standing in the kitchen, who is eating an apple in the kitchen. Um, uh, so the important thing is that they've got the idea that they answer uh, a who can you ask me about her with a who question. And um, we have definitely used our software with uh, kids over the years who have provided augmentative communication output rather than verbal language. So in developing our students' communication competence, we provide receptive training to help them master syntax forms and structures. And as forms are mastered, we provide that structured, supported practice with expressive use in the forms and sentences. And then, finally, we facilitate use of sentences for communication in social settings. And this is the way to achieve and celebrate success with our students. Uh, Darwin would like to know, what would be the requirement as far as language skills level for a child to benefit from this program? This is appearance. Wondering, um, this, this might be a syntax test that we're going to email out, but you can answer that, Mary. Yes. Uh, well, as you know, it's important that they have base, some base sentence structure. So you don't want to introduce this to a kid who's in the one word stage. You want them to at least be formulating simple short sentences. And that's usually between, neurotypically, between two and a half and three. Uh, the very first module in level one is introduction. So it's who is, who is playing the drums, who is painting the fence. So it's a very simple kinds of introduction. So it, it, there's actually a pretty wide age span as far as what the structures cover in neurotypical development, as I say, up through about six. So uh, as long as, as your, your student is understanding or your child is understanding some simple sentences, then they're ready for to begin question quest. And that's one of the things that the language links and prepositions syntax test tells you. Uh, Christine would like to know, and Darwin says thank you. Uh, Christine would like to know if this program works on both a PC and a Mac. Absolutely. Okay. Those are all the questions I have. Any other ones um, out there? Feel free to submit them. And please give them my email, Jessica, because I'm happy to entertain any kind of questions at any time. Another question just came in from Jane. Uh, she wants to know if this is Windows 8 compatible. Yes. 
Great. Um, Bonnie would, would like to say, it sounds as if it would not be appropriate for a student using augmentative alternative communication if she or he is not yet using articles but more basic sentences. Well, that's one of the reasons that we recommend using language links because although it doesn't, uh, articles sometimes are very difficult for kids with, who are uh, AAC users to master. I think the important thing to lo look at is are they using some verb morphology? Are they using some past tense ED? Are they marking uh, using is and are and has and have? Are they using pronouns? Um, the, uh, um, actually, as far as the expressive an an answering, um, if they are comprehending answering those kind of questions, you can actually use this kind of training as an opportunity for modeling how they have to include um, the article in an answer. And in, at first, it actually is easier to answer in a complete sentence. That is actually the step that occurs before being able to answer in that an officer or the officer. If anyone ever has any specific questions about a student, they can always email me, and I'm always happy to share with them what, what I've used. That's a good point, if there are specific Right, because usually when, when that comes up, it's, it's usually that they've got a specific kid in mind, you know, and, and I really need to kind of pick at what more, <laughs> what more is going on. Sure. All right. Well, I think then it will be time for our drawing. At the end, um, if there's no other questions, I would say it's time to do our drawing of the winner of a. What are we giving away, Mary? Are we giving away a free question quest package? The whole thing? Yep. All three levels. All three levels? Yep. Oh my gosh. That is awesome. So um, we'll do our drawing. I don't. I don't have a like drum, wall, drum roll or anything like that, but um, I'm picking out, I'm picking the name right now, and the name is uh, Connie Evans, is Connie Evans, well she's, she's still here, I know she's on the, uh, the call right now, so Connie Evans, you won um, the random drawing, and uh, we have your email, so we will be emailing you with the, uh, you know, to, to get the mailing address of where we need to, to send this. Uh, she says, thank you, with a lot of exclamation points after it. Okay. And um, so we'll, and of all, you're getting congratulations, Connie. Darwin says congratulations. But, um, uh, yeah, so Connie, we'll, we have your email. We'll contact you and get this out to you, um, you know, as soon as we can after the webinar. And I just wanted to sort of steal the, the screen back from Mary here because uh, I wanted to, to point out that even if you did not win, uh, Mary has been very generous in offering a very steeply discounted price um, through Naval Mart only right now, and it's 50% off the Question Quest software series. So. I think that's, that's really generous. Thank you, Mary. And how long were you going to um, offer this special price for, Mary? Yes, that will be good until the end of the year. That's fantastic. So, um, so yeah, so come on over to the Enable Mart. We will also include, of course, the link to Question Quests to purchase it in our post-webinar email as well. So um, there's some questions coming in if we have attendance certificates. Uh, from Sally, yes, uh, that will all, that will be coming to you. Is your attendance certificate will be emailed, and um, I Bonnie's asking about ASHA CEUs, and um, you know the the certificate of attendance is a general you know certificate of attendance from a Naval Mart. It is not approved by any you know governing bodies from districts or you know whoever you need to report to. So you would have to submit that for approval um, on your own. I don't. Uh, 
period. Yeah, as long as you keep your documentation uh, when you're in the three-year certification process for ASHA, uh, I know that the last time I got recertified, almost all of my uh, hours were in linguistics uh, uh, meetings and not in uh, speech language pathology. And, and as long as you've got documentation in case you get audited, you're fine. So, so the, the question would be, no, I don't have any specific ASHA approval, you know, but you do have, I will provide you the certificate for your records. Um, to Mary's point, if you have the records, then you should be fine. Um, and uh, Judy wants to know if we will be at ATIA this year, and I do believe we will at Enable Mart. We'll be there, I believe, if I can double check. And um, Mary, I don't know if you're going to be there. We will not be there, but you will be there, and that's important. <laughs> all right. Well, I think that's all the questions, and we are just about at 4 o'clock on the dot here, Central Standard Time. And I wanted to thank you all again for attending. I look forward to communicating with you after the webinar in the email. I hope that's not our last communication, that you will reach out with any questions. Um, or if there's anything that we did not include or answer for you, just reach out. We'll help you out. And uh, thanks again. Have a great day, guys. Thanks.